Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a fantastic day so far. Today we're going to almost continue where we left off. If you recall last week, we did a quick overview of a pre-made IO expander board, which allows us to use a single ESP32 and get up to 48 or even more sensors on a single ESP32 board. However, that board is quite expensive, uh, especially if you want to go really cheap and try and do it on your own or maybe you just need to expand it by 15 or 16 pins. And um, there is a custom solution for this. So I'm going to show you today on how we can go through and using our ESP32 and connect our own expander IO board to it, and then use those as additional IO to add additional sensors to the limited amount of IO that's available currently on the ESP32. With that said, let's go in and take a look. And there we go guys. So as you can see on this one, this is called a PCF8575 port, which will allow you to connect to your ESP and expand the IO with up to 16 additional pins. So as you can see, this one has a couple of features in here, but mostly this is just to expand your IO. Now, one thing we do need to note is uh, we do also need to solder some pads on the board before we do use this. I'm not going to show you guys how I soldered these, this is for using multiple boards. It's basically an addressing function, but I'll explain to you in a bit. Now, taking a look at the backside of the board, because this uses I2C, so just a rudimentary way of explaining I2C, it's a network that allows you to connect multiple sensors using two wires. It uses addresses to determine which device you want to communicate with or which information you'd like to pull from those addresses. And the way we assign those addresses, in most cases, when you buy anything I2C, it already comes pre-installed or pre-configured with their own address. However, in the cases of these IO expander boards, because you may need to connect or may want to connect multiple boards of these to your single ESP device, you can go through and manually assign addresses. Now, I would highly recommend on the backside of your board to just solder in some of these. If you're just using one, all you'll do is you'll just uh, solder these all ground. So you put this one to ground, this one to ground, and this one to ground. I would highly recommend not leaving these floating. If you don't ground it or connect it to the positive, in this case, which is called VDD, you have to just bridge this one here to actually uh, make these active. You're going to use it on a positive side, but every single pin that you bridge right here, allows it to get a specific address. So say in this case, I am just going to use one board. What I'll do is I'll bridge all of these pads to the ground options. So I'll just bridge um, ground with a zero, a one and a two. So once I've bridged those, it'll allow it to get an address. Well, I don't have these specifics, but I'll show you how you can see all of the devices that's connected on I2C with ESP Home. And then what you could do as well is maybe you want to add an additional device to your ESP home. So exactly the same device. Obviously they can't have the exact same address. So what you'll do is instead of bridging all of these on the second device, follow the same route where a zero is ground, a one is ground, but then on a two, we'll connect it to positive. So we have that second device and you can continue on this route. So for your next device, as long as you don't have the exact same pins connected on each of these devices, that's how you add the additional boards. So if you want to extend it more and more and more, you can go through and just switch the ways these are set up. As long as it's unique per specific board that you have connected, they would all show up and function like they need to and get a different address. So with that said, let's go in and take a look how we're going to connect this to our ESP device. In my case, I have connected these all to ground so because I'm only using a single one. That's all I did. I just grounded all of these out and that would give me the address. I think it's the address of 20 when you bridge all these, but I'll show you how to get the different addresses for the different boards. So there we go on ESP's website, you can also find some example code for setting this up. So we have all this information in here. This is just example code, but it doesn't show us all of the information that we actually need to set these up. It just gives us some information. You can go through the website and you'll probably find exactly how to set these up. But in my code for now, I'm just going to use this. So I'll call it I2C, which is the uh, network that we'll use. 
and we are going to use the following pins. So on that board for the SDA pin, we're going to connect it to GPIO pin number one. And the SCL pin, we're going to connect to GPIO 03. And then we have enabled the scan function in this specific scenario. So if you're not sure about how the addressing works that I just explained, because it can get a bit complicated if you're very new to it, or you just want to make sure like, hey, this device is picking up correctly, I set the option for scan equals true. And that way it's going to scan for all the active addresses that is currently on the ESP. As for the rest of the information, we've covered how to set up uh, ESP Home before. So it's just a standard ESP32. It's connected, ignore the name, um, but we can go through and upload the firmware and have the scan do true. Now to set this up, I'm going to try and explain it this way. So we can quickly take a look at how we are going to connect this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify which pins is GPIO one and GPIO three. Now, as I've said before, there's quite a few uh, places you could go through and Google and find the pinout for the specific ESP you're using. In my case, if we take a look at GPIO one, it's going to be the TX pin and GPIO three is going to be the RX pin on the ESP right here. So GPIO pin is TX on the ESP. So we'll look for the TX pin that we have on this ESP. And as you can see right here, this is the TX pin. And if you recall in our code for GPIO1, we're connecting that to the SDA. So we'll go through and select that TS pin and we're going to connect it to SDA on the board that we have. Then for the RX pin, which is GPIO3, we're going to connect that to SCL. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well, this board does function on 5 volt because we are powering it via USB. We can go through and then connect the VIN pin, which is just a pass through from that ESP USB connector, which would supply 5 volt. We're going to connect that to the VCC right here. And then for ground, we can use any of the ground pins on that ESP and connect it to the ESP itself on here as well. Let's see if we can just quickly change the colors of these as well. So it makes a bit more sense. Let's use the red for the power and then black for ground. So it just makes a bit more sense. These are going to be the data pins. So we'll just make those blue and another one for blue as well. But that's it. That's how we're going to connect these. So fairly simple. VIN pin to VCC, ground pin to ground pin on the ESP, and our TX and RX pins to the SDA and SCL pins. Let me quickly go ahead and connect those up and then I'll show you how the code functions. Okay. So I went through and connected that up. So if we click on the logs right here, you'll see that, hey, it's connected. We don't really have anything identified or uh, we don't really have any sensors or anything connected or identified any type of sensors. But what we did do is we enabled that scan function. So if we go down, you'll see right here in green, it tells us that it did a bus scan right here. So it scanned on I2C and the pins that we have identified. And it did tell us that it, it found an address at 0x20, which would be the address for our little board that we have connected to the ESP. So with that information in mind, we can go back and then modify the code to add our sensors as well into the specific code. So let's quickly take a look at that as well. And you may notice there is an ID, as we've discussed previously, an ID is just an identifier for ESP Home to be able to call this specific device. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that ESP will be able to identify where this device is and what is connected to that specific device and what type of device it is. So according to ESP's codes right here, we do a simple configuration. So what I did was that's the sensor, the name of the sensor. Now you may realize that this is the PC F8574 instead of the one that we're using, which is the 85 one. We need to give it an ID, which is again, just for ESP to know the name of this device or be able to call it back. And then we have that address right there. And that is the address that we have found from the scan that we did. And we know for a fact that, hey, this is for 
uh, 0x20 is that address. ID ID, again, this is just because I gave this an ID. Um, it's mostly used if you are using more of these. So if you're connecting more than one device, you can add additional buses. So I'm just calling it bus A. And in this case, we have bus A, which is just the ID for ESP to identify that. And then we have it. And then we just tell ESP, I'm like, hey, this is a 8575 instead of it being a 8574 right here. We just set that true right here. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Now we can go through and start adding in our sensors. Now adding the sensors functions almost exactly the same as it would function in adding any normal sensors to your ESP. The only difference is you need to identify like, hey, the hey, the sensor is running the sensor board instead of it being connected directly to your ESP. So in this case, binary sensor, we've already set these up with the platform. It's called GPIO. We give it a name. I'm just calling it pin zero and ID, which is uh, again, just the ID for us to be able to use it in the future in ESP if we need to. And then we identify the pin right here. And we say like, hey, this is on this board. We've given it the name, so the ID right here. So it's putting like, hey, this is the name of the we're pulling. So it's that uh, IO expander. So we have to include the, it's for this one. And then give it the name or the pin number that we're using. So obviously pin zero will be P00, uh, P00 on that board. And we just do mode and mode to say like, hey, this is an input or if an output, we can change it to an output and then just invert it in true. And that's it. So I'll go through and save and install this. And then we can quickly see how this function on the device. There we go. So that has uploaded. As you can see, it shows us we have pin zero here with the state of off. Now we have discussed the different types of sensors before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge this connection on the this device right here to from ground to that pin zero or P zero. So I need to plug this in real quick. So I'll just use the ground that's on this board already. And then if we bridge this to the P zero on the board itself, sorry, I need to see if I can take a look. You'll see that it changed the state of that pin right there to on and off as we go through the, the specific item. Now, obviously we just identified one but that's basically how you'll do the contact sensors in your board, similarly to the way we have set up the previous board that we had. The only difference is if we set it up this way, we can actually use five volt sensors, meaning that if you have your PIR sensors, you can actually connect it to all of the pins that's available on this board as well now. But one more thing you can also do, which you can't do with the board we took a look at last week, is we can also connect relays to the same board as well. So to add a switch, it's going to be very similar to the way we did with the previous one. All we'll do is, all we'll, do is we'll just replace this to be a switch or you add it as an additional one, like I've said. So if we have binary sensors, we'll add all of the binary sensors in here. And then if we have switches, we can add in a switch as well below that. Just make sure that we update the pins that it is assigned to. So what we could do is we could just update this one right here to be a switch instead for simplicity. And we say like, hey, it's GPIO and we have exactly the same pin identified. But here we have if it's an input or an output. Now, in this case, if it is going to be a relay that we are connecting it to, it has to be an output because it needs to supply a 5 volt trigger to the relay in order to turn it on. So we need to change this to an output in order for that to function. And that's it. So we can go in, save and install. And then I'll show you how to connect up that relay. And then we can take a look at how it functions. So real quick. So if we add our relay in here, all we're going to do is instead of using the P1 sensor as an input where it bridges the ground and then it's for the contact sensors, what we're going to do is we are using that as an output now. So connecting up the relay is going to be fairly simple because we're already connecting from the VIN pin to VCC right here. We could use the VDD pin on this board right here to connect the relay to. So we'll connect the relay's VCC to that to supply power. We also need to supply it with ground right here. 
and then IN for the signal cable will all go into the P0 right there. Again, we can change the colors of these just for it to make a bit more sense. So we have a ground wire here. If we could have left it as is, let's just make that black. The power cable, which we'll make red. And then we have the signal, which we can leave at green. And that's how I'm going to connect up this relay real quick. And then we can take a look at if it works or not. And back after we've uploaded the code, we can see that now this pin zero has changed to a action option where we can now turn it on or off. As we can see, the relay is currently turned off in this instance. So if we trigger it to turn it on, you can see it has switched that relay. So we can turn the relay on and off in here as well. So I'm sure I don't need to show you guys how to add the additional ones. The only difference is if you want to add additional ones, You'll keep everything exactly the same, but you will need to update the name and also the pin for the pin that is on this board. And as you have noticed, the names on these pins is fairly straightforward. So P00, pin 0, P01, pin 1, and so forth as you go through these pins. And all you'll do in adding them is just copying exactly the same information over to next section so if i want to add another relay i'll just go through paste that in update the name of the relay we could call it a relay for example and then change the pin number to p1 instead and we also need to change the id to be unique in this case so we have a way of identifying that in the future it is always very important to add an id because you never know if you ever want to set up something small like i discussed in our automations video within esp home it is always extremely important to identify or add a id for you in here if you ever want to set up a small automation but that should be it in manually expanding or adding your own io expansion boards instead of spending a lot of money on a single board which will have no replaceable components or easily replaceable components in that case and that's going to do it for this one guys uh, just real quick showing you how to add that expander board into your esp config so we can go ahead and use that in future videos which we are going to start working on creating our own alarm system and then also i'll show you how i created that custom board which is only using two of those in order to expand my io to 32 inputs for all of the sensors that i do need and then also a 433 sensor in there as well but with that said i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day